Texture Junkies, this is Sharon. I have a project I wanted to share with you, um, and it's a another addition to the project I made recently for the hop for PM Artist Studio in the Makers Creative Collab. So I actually have a second piece that I want to put together, and I'll be using my BB Craft items to finish it off. And I'm going to share with you how to get this look without the swelling it. Because I, this is a lot of steps and you know I, I make these things up ahead of time and I have things handy to play with because when I go to make a project I make a lot of them so that I can pick and choose and change and you know make more than one or send out in gifts you know uh, prizes. Speaking of which Lisa your package went out this morning and you have some of these pieces on the way. So anyway, I wanted to share, um, you guys saw this already in my last video. So I just wanted to tell you where we're at and this is what encouraged this, but it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna put this away. So what I've got here is another one of these that I made thicker and it's just on a piece of wood you can just paint a piece of wood just like that or you could use a frame or you could frame a piece of wood if you want I mean I need to finish this off and I'm gonna share with you how I'm gonna do that I sanded it to make the tiles more even so I'm gonna pull my camera out just a little bit more to make sure you're seeing it all there we go okay so what I did was used clay and it's just this air dry clay right here um, and I pressed it into embossing folders. I rolled it uh, over stencils, and you'll see some of those. And then I used a pizza cutter to just make some rectangular and square shapes. And I used the swelligant on them. But today, we're going to use a little paint to create the look on some of my BB craft pieces. Like these and I'm going to share with you this awesome deal from BB Craft because I really like what I got. Um, so first of all I did want to share the, the air dry clay is super easy to sand. You can see here's a piece I haven't finished yet. You can actually let's take this away just any old sandpaper and what I did I actually have a block outside that's pretty large and it's covered with sandpaper it's just a wood block and it's like attached and it's so easy to get this as smooth as you want so you know don't worry about getting it perfect when you go to cut them you can do it fast you know use the Sun we're having a heat wave right now oh my gosh it's been so hot by the way I'm downstairs because it's too hot in my art room upstairs to play and I haven't been up there gosh since my last live but it, it's been warm um, every time a train goes by we might get a little camera shake too I've got to be careful not to shake the table anyway so that is how that happens with the sanding and it makes it really smooth really smooth and I'll be finishing that off so I have a couple pieces here that I've got ready for this. But first of all, I'm gonna share with you how to get the look like the Swelligant. So this patina look, and this is one of the frames, by the way. There are eight molds in this set, and I just used resin, and the easiest way to clean them is just to put tape on them when you're done, and it pretty well picks everything off, so. And look at all these great, I mean, this is $13.99 for eight pieces. And there's some really fabulous pieces here. I did have one kind of don't overfill them or you'll end up with a lot of pieces to trim. And definitely um, this one for me, and it might not be for you if you order them, I mean, but I still have seven more, is really, really thin. It's not a very deep, let me see if I can find the piece. I thought I had it right here. It's not a very deep mold. Um, so the detail on there isn't as crazy. I mean, for a mold, that is a lot of detail. 
and there's little cherubs here and I mean it's good it's just not very thick it is the right thickness though if you wanted to put it inside of a journal or inside of an art book so I mean that it's still very usable it's just not as thick as some of the others so that is my thought um, so I'm going to take these away. So $13.99 and you get all eight pieces. Plus you get um, like pipettes and, you know, I, I, there it's a kit. It's a full kit. So I'm going to put that to the side. And this old pizza cutter, I just use in my craft stuff. So, it, it you know, it'll all clean off and then I'll put it back. It's really cool. And it's inspiring when I use it. I love I love how that happens. I try to have inspiring tools as well if I can, you know. So there's the clay. We talked about that. You could probably use just Fimo. Um, that would be fine also. I just, I liked the clay more. Um, it, it was just better for me. So that's all. And I made a lot of these ahead of time. I have a ton left. Um, just to have them on hand because you never know when you're going to want to use something like this. And if you do them in stages and you have them ready, then you can just put a project together and it doesn't take you 20 hours to make something from scratch. So just make them ahead of time. I'm going to pull my camera up just a tiny bit more. I can kind of see it. I've actually got you on an antique step ladder on top of the table. I was trying to find just the right thing, just the right way to do this. So this is one of those molds, and I really like it. You're going to find a coupon code at the uh, in the information and a link to all these items if you're interested. The other thing, this piece right here, I got 10 of these. And you get these for $9.99, and they're wood. Aren't they amazing? So that's the swell again. This is the look we're going for today. Okay, so let's do one of those up real quick. You might notice with the swell again, and that is an, that's an actual patina right there with like the patina liquid and, you know, and you put the, the metal paint on that's like got, I've had these outside working on my table. Um, you put the metal paint on and it's actually got metal in it. And then you put the patina <laughs> colors on. So sorry. Let me also mention the BB Craft YouTube program. If you have a YouTube channel and you would like to do this too, uh, you just need a hundred people to qualify. You send them an email and they will decide, um, most likely, if you have more than a hundred, to let you pick out items and do the same thing. So. Um, Go to bbcraft.com and there'll be a link below as well and look up the YouTube program or email them. Uh, and all of that is on their website as well. So that's the YouTube program. Okay. I was saying my portable AC downstairs, which I hope you can't hear, it actually just beeped and I had to go drain it because it pulls the moisture out of the air. Anyway, okay, let's get to this and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with that project. So we're going to use this, and you might notice that the um, the swell again, which is a real patina, actually is down in all the grooves. You're going to want to start with your lightest color first. Let's see here. I've got some paint brushes here, but I often use my fingers, which is why I'm gloved today. So I'm going to use a couple different colors of blue here. I've got a little, just a, a lid, and I'm big on recycling, so I think this is a good way to use them. So I'm going to put a little bit of that out. I'm shaking that more. And then I'm going to put a little bit of my blue out that I got from Anne, and I just love it. I didn't have this shade, believe it or not. And we're going to put a little white out, too. Did I bring the white? Where's my white? Oh, no. I swore I put white in there. Did I set it someplace else? 
no matter. We'll just use these. That's fine. So you can actually add a little white in to vary your shades of blue. Let's pull one of these out so you can see what I'm talking about. So this was a this blue right here is actually a different color of the patina that I kind of just dripped on there. This is the one we're going to be using today on the project. So we'll leave her out so you can see her too. So you're going to want to cover the whole thing. Get down in all those little grooves with the various colors. I know I'm shaking the camera, so I'm gonna pick it up. Make sure you get all the edges. You don't need to get the back, because the back is gonna be glued on. But we're getting that look, you know? Glad I put gloves on for this today. So we wanna make sure we get a couple different shades going on in there of the patina color. Yeah, see, you don't need the Swelligant. If you want to try the Swelligant, it's really fun to have it happen organically and naturally, and I liked that. Um, but it just offered me the opportunity to, let's get a little bit more of that blue, the opportunity to see exactly how it's going to do that and then recreate that look. You might find some lighter colors in a real patina the older it gets. So I'm just adding some various shades here. And we're gonna set this off to dry for a minute while we, while I show you what we're doing with the other thing. So I've got water here. So this just needs a moment. So I've got a fan going, towels. So with this one, what I wanna do is cover all of those edges. And I'm probably just going to go ahead and use like a, I thought about, you know, I can need to paint it, but I thought about putting a ribbon all the way around because if you can find a ribbon the same size as your wood, the same width, that's a really great way to finish it off too. I've done that with paintings before, like a velvet ribbon or I think black velvet looks really good like that. But in any case, we're going to cover that up. Let me see if... Yeah, I didn't bring a black down. I do have my Nuvo mousse, but I don't have that. I might, if this isn't dried up, I brought them down so I could, so I could moisten them. You just have to, if you buy the Nuvo mousse, use it. It, it. You're gonna have to check them constantly and add water and mix it constantly. So that's, you know, little tip. I've had mine for two years though. So I'm gonna use, a stiffer brush first. There's a little water in there. Let's get that mixed up. I think I have to pick everything up so we don't shake. And I'm going to cover those edges. And then I'll go back in with a little copper on the edges of those tiles more. I just want to, because I sanded the whole thing, I want to get more color on there because I kind of sanded my paint. So I have a secret that I shared in my last video. I use spray paint a lot for my base coat. Depends on what I'm doing, but if I want to get down in all the little edges, like on those resin pieces, I actually, sorry, it's in my mouth. I actually spray painted these and then I went add them with everything else, sorry. Because it just gives me, it gets in all the little cracks, it gives a good base coat. It's kind of like adding gesso, but it depends on what you're working with. It works great on resin. Great. So I'm going to set that down. I'm done with that. I'm letting that dry still. Ah, got it on me. I got it on me. Yeah, we're having a heat wave, and around here we don't have AC because, I mean, it, the homes just aren't built with them ahead of time because it's such a, um, anyway, it, it's a mild climate we're in. We're, we're actually in a rainforest. doesn't get real hot, um, but maybe half of July and August, and that's great. Um, but that also means that we don't need AC all the time. So I'm just going to use my fingers this time and I'm just going to get around all of those little edges. And then I might even go back in with a little turquoise 
and finish it off. Just to give it, just hit it here and there with a little bit of that metallic color. And then we'll, we'll be using that metallic anyway for the next step. So I just want to get all those little edges right there. And let's see how this is doing. This is still a little wet, but I think we can do the job. Let's try it. So then you're going to want to hit your high points, but don't make it perfect. You want to make sure and get down in there with some of it, you know, like, if you want to use like a like a stencil brush or something stiff that's a great way to do it you can always put it on and wipe it back off and see what comes off you know and let it happen more randomly that was one of the things I really liked about the swell again because I had no control and I like things that I don't have control over because I don't know there's just a freedom in it that's very rewarding to me and that's because I am so I don't know I it, it, it's that side of my brain that I use all the time and uh, it's mixing because I put a lot on there so I'm just hitting it here and there and I might do this a couple times um, I might go back in with a little more blue and decide, oh, I don't like how much gold is there, or I might go back in with a little more copper, but, you know, it, it might get a couple different swipes. I definitely want these edges. I just don't want to waste that paint. I'm weird like that. I also deplore waste. If you know me at all, you know that I recycle as often as possible because I don't like waste. I do need to get into this little area right here. like that. So your high points are going to be where more of your metal is showing. So I think we did okay there. What do you think, guys? Um, it needs a couple more little hits here and there, but and that one has more of that blue on it, but I think that's pretty good. Um, like I said, keep fussing with it until you feel happy with it. Uh, and this is two different colors of the swell again. And then there was one more step that I did when I was done. I noticed that there was a reaction. Maybe you can find a crackle uh, liquid would be great, but the reaction that happened happened because of the swell again, I think. Um, and that was because it's a non-water-based medium, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, you can use... Uh, glazing liquid or this is the DuraClear high gloss and I found that there was a cool reaction that happened and that's what made the tiles look like they were um, glazed as well like they had been in a kiln you know I see some spots on here that I want to hit so I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there just a few just here and there it's funny, when, when you do this, it is very rewarding to sit and fuss with it um, because you see this or that that you want to change and until you get it just right, you know, um, until you're happy with it. You know, it's not done until the artist says it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that up a little bit. So this is all swelligant on this project, and here I am mis mixing paint with it, and I bet I can make it blend in. You can get this look with alcohol ink. You can get this look with paint. Um, don't think watercolor would work or any of the crayon mediums, but, I mean, there's a lot of ways to go about this um, with your different mediums. Just make sure that you put on your patina color first, and then darker darker you know uh and your metals uh that's how the rust paste works as well so you're going to want to go with your darker color first and work your way up and then i always end up adding a few more layers so this is dry in the middle so in the sake for the sake of the video i am going to attach my pieces so this is one of those gorgeous frames that i got and there's a smaller one in this set, too. Where's it at? The smaller round one. There it is. 
Um, so they're similar. And I used the larger one. And what I did was I took one of my favorite books, which is this. And it is the silent screen uh, pictorial history from Daniel Bloom. And Daniel Bloom also does opera books and, um, oh gosh. So that's talkies, opera, and plays, I believe. So you can go in and, you know, search Daniel Bloom, and there's a lot of great books out there. If you don't want to ruin the book, if it's in great shape, which this one wasn't, I chose on purpose that it wasn't, um, because I wanted to use the images. So if you don't want to ruin it, make copies. That's fine. So she kind of looks like me. And there's actually, and I think it's the same, I'm not sure, there's another one that looks like me too, way back when I, you know, if we were reincarnated and had the same bodies, this is me. So that's why I chose her. And here she is again in another frame. But I wasn't sure which one I wanted, and I, I used my favorite gel medium and put her down on a piece of chipboard. And then I traced it out, and I have these to choose from. So I'm going to use this one. She actually had a helmet on with um, horns. And I have some pieces here. Where did they go? There they are. I actually want to mimic those horns. But I realize her horns would be this way. But I'm going to do it the other way. So I'm doing it in sort of an abstract way. And I'm going to be using some glue. And then notice she's at an angle. So I want to use another piece, I think. Now I could go with some jewelry. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Um, but maybe not that one. Maybe when I go use her, I'll use that piece of jewelry. That broken piece. There's a lot of little swirly bits you get from, from this too. From the other mold. Um, all of them are frames except for the one swirly one that's got all of these different ones here. But which one to use? Oh, I think I want to use this piece right here. And this, I'm going to do that because it's about the same height. This is not from that kit. However, this one is and I, it needs trimmed out. I used too much... Um, too much resin which is no big deal just cuts right up or this one would be good so I'm gonna attach these mimic her horns do I want her horns out or in that's a choice isn't it now I think out what do you think out 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 and then we're gonna put one of these other baby craft pieces right here on top so it matches my lion, however, slightly different. Let's move those over so you can see. So I'm going to put the glaze on this and let it dry while we glue those on. Did I bring enough brushes? That's a good question. Oh, wait, I have another one over here. So all I did was pour that glaze on there and dab it, dab it, dab it, and it, it reacted with the swell again. And I showed you some close-ups last time of how that happened, so it's going to happen again. Um, and it's just about mixing a water base and, and a... Um, well, what would that be called? A... a Chem a, a non-water-based medium, <laughs> an acrylic medium. Uh, it's actually more of a chemical with the swell yet. So there we go. And I didn't get any on the back um, because I'm going to be gluing that down. So let's do this. So I did these ones slightly different because they would not have the same reaction. Although I think I might want to just dab some of that paint on there. You can mix it together, won't hurt a thing. It just needed a little more color. All right, so then you're gonna wanna use a good glue, a, a forever glue, basically. So I have this super glue fix-all adhesive, which is 
I might have got this at the Dollar Tree. I'm not sure. I also have this soft gel mat, which is what I attached all the tiles with. But I think this one is just fine for this. So first of all, I want to see where she sits here. And maybe I'll go ahead and attach it to the back of that first. So let's go like, so we know this is the middle. So let's go like this. There's a heart there, go figure. in place. You could use your hot glue gun here. Um, I only use the hot glue gun if I absolutely have to. Uh, and when I do, I always use my Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. So I made a water fountain this week because um, I'm trying to encourage my cat to drink more. So <laughs> I made her her own water fountain. So I'm just putting it on the back of this on the largest spaces. I don't need it all the way over. Where's the other one? And then we'll lay these ones down before we put the frame on top. You're going to want to go in with like a, like a stick or something and clean it up. See, I don't want it on my. So that goes there. We have time to adjust it too. And this is a nice clear glue. Just mimicking abstractly her horns. Come on. Okay. And then we're going to put on top of here. And on top of here with hot glue you would only have a moment to get it right and with a glue like this you have a little more time don't need it perfect just need it like perfect oh I forgot this didn't I okay that's all right it's never too late with this glue There we go. We got her glued down, adjusted. I want those little pieces sticking out right there. And then this one. And this one, remember it's wet on, on the back. But I'm going to add this. And set it on top. Now, if you're going to have pieces that are precarious and you're afraid they're going to move, uh, you could use some masking tape to hold it down until it's dry. Just make sure the glue doesn't come in contact with your masking tape. And then, oh, I didn't even need to do the top of that because look at that. So I should have brought my masking tape down, huh? Another thing you can do, hold it in place with something. Is that straight? Ish? In the middle? Ish? So this is where I needed a skewer, but I'm going to use this pen. Make sure I got it all. And wipe off the pen. <laughs> Gotta wipe off that pen. <laughs> ah, yeah, I need that masking tape after all, don't I? Hey, I'm gonna try this. I hope it doesn't peel off any of my layers. Oh my gosh, don't use tape with gloves. Okay. Just gently. Ah! <laughs> I almost, if I hadn't put glue behind that right here, I could put something underneath, but 
Oh, oh well. I get it. I could wipe off the back. Hold that in place. All right, let's get the lid on that. Maybe I'll use the other glue and wipe that off. It wouldn't be one of my videos if it was perfect, so we all know that I'm just having a play here. I'm doing it. I'm afraid that it's gonna take off some of my stuff. So I'm gonna clean this off with a paper towel and I'm gonna use my other glue because I think it'll hold now. So let's see here. Sometimes I have to run these under hot water to get the lid off. So let's just put it on the bottom here. So I have a heavy one and I have in the golden and then I have this um, soft gel. So either one would work. Glad I have a paper towel, I'll tell you. So we're just gonna hold that for a moment. Take my little pin, remove the glue I don't want. Although it'll dry clear, so it's no big deal. And then when I'm done with this, I'll probably go over the whole thing with a little bit more of the, um, a little bit more of the Dura Gloss to make it nice and shiny and uh, more like glazed pottery. Is that straight? Let's find out. <laughs> And with this spot right here that came up, I'm just going to touch it with, you know, because these are supposed to look aged and glazed and not perfect, you know. And there we have it. So that's a project using my wood pieces, the wood onlays from BB Craft and the frame. And then the all the other goodies that I had on hand already. So I'll be using these again. I have a, a lot of these to play with and I will come back with a finished, um, because I'm gonna mess with it some more. I need it to dry a little more, um, but I'll come back with a finished look made with paint to match this for my next project or another one down the road. Either way, we will make that happen. So just keep messing with it. Put your blues down first and enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this project. I know it was a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of ways you could go about doing this. You could add jewelry. You could put uh, beads on the end. You can add fringe. Um, there's just a lot of ways to use these. So I recommend um, giving it a try. You know, you, you never know until you try. Isn't that the truth? And uh, I highly recommend these these molds too. So uh, you'll find a link below where you're gonna get a discount, and I think it lasts for two years, 2022 now. So um, they, but I mean, you have a little time to compile a list, and I'll have one more video in this series using another product that I got from BB Craft, and I will link all of them below if you want to check them out and have a little sneak peek. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a magical day and please subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the bell and a thumbs up would help me out so much. I will see you soon. Thank you, Texture Junkies. Bye.